Hey, this is Max at 343 Labs. We're a music production school based in New York City, Berlin, and online. And today, I'd like to show you a clip by one of our instructors, John Selway, which is taken from 343 TV, which airs right here on our channel several days per week. Now, if you want to watch the full stream, head over to studio.343labs.com, link in the description, which is our new producer hub where you can meet other producers, get free content, collaborate, and get feedback on your music. Enjoy the clip. Let's listen. Let's listen to the drum loop that I chose to get started with. And I actually picked one from Led Zeppelin. Play. And I don't even know what song this is from. All right, so I don't want to play the... I mean, the algorithm's not really going to catch that, I guess, but... I would be really, that'd be amazing if we get a if we get a copyright thing for for that. We can always edit it out. But anyway, I thought it was interesting, right? It's got this kind of raw, dirty. It's got a room kind of sound to it. It's resonant. Uh, it's got a, a slap back echo on it. That's creating a, a, an eighth note kind of you know echo on the rhythm, and it just jumped out as I was going through these breakbeats. It's um, taking that. I'm dropping it in the simpler and then uh, putting it in slice mode. All right. And it, this, it sounds like, I mean, this, this beat is, it, it's very tightly timed. It's, it, it's fun. You can see it looks like really even 16 notes uh, slices, right? So this is, this should slice up really, really well. And then it's literally just, Putting in, let's, the first note is C1. And, you know, there's not that much variation between the slices. Yeah, it sounds like it's just repeating kind of one a couple of beats. So you don't need to use the whole thing. And then it's just putting in... You've also seen me do this before. I don't even think too hard about what's my rhythm going to be. <laughs> I just throw in a bunch of notes. Uh, and all right, let's see what, what that sounds like. Yeah, you know, so that's like reshuffling the original sounds, not really transposing them or filtering them or making them sound different. And then, you know, you can play around with transposition of each note just whenever you like something I feel like I'm losing where the the, the downbeat is I mean I, I could put on metronome real quick not bad I feel like I want these to be switched around like the first half and the second half are um yeah, there we go. That makes more sense for me for this pattern with the downbeats. All right, so that's how I that's how I started out, just coming up with that, and then of course this reverse and invert MIDI notes is really handy for the situation. Some cool variations just like that. All right. Cool. So what next? Well, you know, it needs to sound beefier and full, more full and more powerful. And, you know, generally, you know, there's different ways to do that. But probably, you know, tuning it, these are kind of, these sound good as they are, and they, these would be good as a layer with some lower frequency drums, but I could also transpose them, play them lower. And then also there's the warping and the, the changing the tone of it, right? So, play, you. volume up a little bit. I want to feel this. And there's more. You, it sounds muffled now, but there's more low frequency in it. 
I could try, and then you know, usually people in sometimes you'll hear, oh, you know, don't you don't use complex or complex pro for your beats because it'll mess up the transients. I mean, that's not a rule, but if I use complex pro. It's keeping, it's, you know, what it's doing is it's keeping the higher frequencies, the higher harmonics, overtones closer to where they were before I pitched it down. So it sounds brighter. So that actually sounds kind of cool. It does make it a little less snappy. The transients are a little faded in kind of, but I don't care. I like how it sounds. can tighten it up by increasing the fade there. It's less sustained now. And I can also kind of tighten these up a little bit with, with the modulating the envelope, I'm using an envelope to modulate the filter frequency. Let's see. So right, it can be darker, but leave some high frequency at the beginning. I don't want to go too far dark. I like that. And then I can start saturating it, thickening it up using the drive in. It's getting kind of loud, huh? Let's turn this down just a little bit so you can hear me speak over all this noise. All right. Where were we? Sounds smoother now because it's being clipped and saturated. I mean, we're in there now. It sounds pretty good. Can play around with this stuff too. Just makes little tonal changes. That's without the Complex Pro. That's just transposing the audio down. That sounds good too. It sounds a little nat more natural that way. Yeah, I feel like Repitch, Complex Pro, those are the ones that sound the coolest. Okay, so that was the process. Um, this is what I came up with earlier. Oh, whoa. A little brighter, sharper, actually, but similar. And I made a couple of different variations. As you saw, I was using the inverse and the reverse, and just also moving notes around a little bit. Right, so yeah, I'm, I'm seeing some comments here. I like this. Uh, Alien wooden percussive instrument. That's what uh, Orgerier, our uh, Middle Earth resident, is. Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, I agree. I'm kind of going for that. I want it to sound like uh, acoustic and organic and synthy and powerful, right? And that's what's happening. And, you know, what makes it sound synthy really is like the filter, honestly. That's what's doing it. You could also play around with, uh, oh, right. That's the other part of it I forgot is pitch modulation. You know, uh, I'm, I'm sure I mentioned this before, but like synthesizing percussion, you know, kick drums, snare drums, toms, congas, things like that, very often is incorporates pitch modulation to get that kind of snappy transient. So you can take a drum that's not very snappy and make it snappy by putting a very quick decay on the pitch modulation.
Um, it's tricky with samples because if you speed up the frequency of the sample, it, it plays it faster, so it gets shorter. So sometimes you might want to do a pitch modulation and you'll end up like, where'd the bass go or where'd the, the low frequencies go? Or why did it get so short? And it's because of that. Like, so I have to be, look how short my uh, time is on that envelope. It's like two milliseconds and it's just doing a little tiny bit, like a little clicky thing at the beginning. If I make that longer, actually, you know what? You know, it's not because I have the stretching on, it's I'm avoiding that problem. Listen to what it sounds like without the warping. Right, see how much shorter it is now? Uh, that also might be because of the, the envelope, but whatever. You get my point. <laughs> that sounds better. That sounds almost, I don't know, it reminds me of that Quoth, do you remember? Aphex Twin did that track called Quoth that's just like, sounds like it's banging on cans and big metal things. It sounds a little cleaner and tighter with that real fast pitch modulation at the beginning. All right, that's, so that's what we're doing. Simple Sam says, add an 808 broken beat and a stabby bass. Yeah, I could. Oh, I like this also. For some reason, Jean-Paul Bondi says, for some reason, this pattern reminds me of Front 242. Well, yeah, it's a little industrial too, right? If you, you know, certain types of EBM and industrial dance music have that, like, metallic percussion, right? So definitely works for this too. Cool. Oh, yeah, right. It's Polygon Window Quoth, right? But yeah, that's uh, also, that's Aphex Center, right? Cool. Um, yo, Raw Cuts, no problem. You're late. You're here. As long as you're here, that's fine. Um, so let's move on. Well, those actually, <laughs> I just layered, accidentally layered two versions of the same sample doing different rhythms together. That actually sounds really good. Okay, happy accident. I'm gonna try and tune. I want to see. What, I want to try to tune them further. All right, this one. Okay, this is. I just thought I'd point this out because it's uh, the 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 warping is in. Re, uh, where did it go? Oh yeah, re pitch. You can't tune the sample, right? I was thinking I wanted it to be lower. How do I do that? All right, well let's let's put this back. I'm actually turn the warping off for a second. That sounds good too. more bassy now if I want a little less bright I can bring the oh yeah it is a lot less bright now because it's tuned down a lot that's a nice under layer all right so now I wanted to add a kick, but I decided to avoid a, a 909, 808 typical kind of sound and go through, try to get an acoustic kick drum to sound right. So I have the dirt and the grit and the resonance and the weirdness of some random acoustic kick drum sample. And there's a bunch of those in this vinyl drum vault uh, collection. There's a bunch of vinyl drums that are, you know, sampled from individual. Stuff like this, like you can hear the the vinyl noise and the hi hats and the whatever, you know, all that stuff. I'm, I want to use that. So where's the one that I actually used? Find show in browser. There it is. Kick nine. Now it doesn't sound particularly techno already. Actually, I don't even know if you're. Actually, I just realized you may not be hearing those. Now do you hear that? There you go. Okay, so that's the one that I chose. And um, let's hear what it sounds like without any modification, right? It's, well, it's tuned down. 
Whoa, that's a lot of pitch modulation. <laughs> Let's turn that off. All right, remember, this, this was minus four. So this is what it sounds like just all by itself. Oop, there we go. Not very exciting. But then we have loud. Is that too loud? Can you hear me? And then we have, again, the same trick with the pitch modulation. Now it has like the punchy modern transient. It got shorter, it got less bassy, but I don't care. <laughs> I want this. I might, I could maybe layer this with a boomier kick later, but for right now, I kind of like how it is. Just real punchy. Let's fatten this up a little bit. I'm gonna do some upwards, upwards compression, some expansion. Trying to bring up. Oh, that's a little bit too much. But you get what I honestly, you know, this is the opposite of compression. It's take, I have it, it's the multi band dynamic. So it's bringing frequencies 98 hertz and below louder when the signal crosses the threshold. So that's expansion. It's a little bit much, as you can see. Probably need to oh, not overdo that. Yeah, I'm not sure. I think it, it doesn't sound better, right? So that trick didn't work. We'll just leave it like it is for now. Let's hear how it sounds with the whole mix. And I had it without this before. Cool. Am I missing anything? Did I forget to turn anything off or on? It's dirty, right? It's got that little crackle in it. All right. I forgot to tune it back to minus four. Yes, I did miss something. That was the thing. It was the same trick with the drums before. It was like, they sound good, but I want them to be thicker. So yeah, pitch it down. You are absolutely right. It's definitely gonna be better. A little woofy, but we'll, we'll work it out. Okay. Better. Ah! <laughs> what just happened? If you put the sustain below the note you're playing, it does a little bend. You gotta be careful with that though. Okay. So we got it, we got the start of a track now. I'm grooving. It's a start. Let's throw in that new loop that I made. Let's hear how it just sounds by itself. Eh, not loving it. Let's leave it out. So, I do want some, some more sub in there. Right, and I mentioned maybe eventually layering a different kick with this one, but I kind of also like how it's kind of woody and punchy and not too deep, right? You don't always have to be boom, boom, boom all the time. Your, your, your low bass can come from something else. I hope you enjoyed that. Again, if you want to watch the full stream, head over to studio.343labs.com, link in the description below. And that is our new producer hub where you can find free content, collaborate with other musicians, get feedback on your music, and just meet a community of like-minded artists and producers. See you next time.